Hey, sellers, welcome back. We got a parcel, parcel in the mail. You don't know what it is because you read the title. Let's have a look at it. Lots of bubble wrap for cardboard protection. We have Hollow Legions, third edition. Finally arrived in my hot little hands. Uh, Dave and I went in on this together, so uh, we shared our uh, resources as it were. Because living in Canada, you talk on shipping, and I just have to pay the customs at the door. Um, yeah, it was uh, redonkulous the amount of money. So uh, we have Hollow Legions, and we're going to unbox it right now. So let's get into it. All right, so here we go. Uh, just unwrap the uh, shrink wrap on it, and. Uh, Looking at the cover art, um, another phenomenal painting from MMP. I really like what they've done with their new drawings, or excuse me, the new paintings uh, that they have on their uh, their modules. So, uh, really eager to get into this one here. So let's look at the back. Usual uh, uh, ramble. <clears throat> now it's going to be including a lot of desert boards, um, which uh, Dave and I have a couple of experiences playing desert. <clears throat> Nothing fun. And uh, I don't see us playing too many of those, although we might pull out the odd um, scenario that fits our needs. So what does it contain? It's got eight map boards, uh, eight sheets of overlays, five counter sheets, 53 scenarios, including uh, eight from the Soldiers of the Nagus uh, uh, action pack, and um, some updated rules, which are superseded by the uh, electronic rulebook, which is always up to date. So if you don't already have that, make sure you get that one. And then we have uh, some of the Italian Chapter H notes and the North Africa rules notes, which again are superseded by the ones in the uh, electronic rule book or the, uh, the pocket books. I believe that's the most recent one. And uh, more chapter dividers to add to the uh, box. That's never going to be used. All right, let's crack it open and uh, see what it looks like. All right, so the uh, little attachment card that comes with every one, which again uh, gives you a list of components, are the ones I've already read off, some contact information. So it's pretty standard in every box that they come with. So uh, the box that comes with several sets of uh, pages go in the old three-ring binder, which again, uh, superseded by the electronic and or the uh, the pocket books, which has Chapter F included in them. So Chapter F is your desert uh, rules, your North Africa campaign. Um, rules that apply to it. So you're going to have special things like Sangars and uh, uh, Dares and Wadis and, and all the rest of those unique desert features that are not usually represented elsewhere. Now, um, for those of you that play uh, Eastern Europe, uh, Russia Steps campaign, the uh, step rules are going to be in this chapter F. And so uh, just it, you're basically going to use desert boards to represent the step terrain. And they, they change ways some of the features are, but uh, um, you will have that information in these uh, chapters as well. So like most of these uh, rules, it starts off with some terrain descriptions. A lot of information on wadis, which are basically like a gully, but... Um, they're treated a little bit differently given how expansive the rules are. Well, wow, that's like uh, one, two, three, four pages for the, uh, well, three and a quarter pages for the Wadi information which is uh, a lot of information for that terrain feature, but I guess that is what it is. <clears throat> then we go on to hillocks, which again, another terrain feature, which are very subtle, uh, hard to see hills. So it's like a half level obstacles, basically. Not surprisingly, there's uh, rules on sand. Kind of need that in the desert. 
sangers, uh, which are improvised um, emplacements in the desert. Usually things that are cobbled together with rocks and other natural features to uh, produce some kind of defensive position for the uh, uh, for the defenders. So here we go into the arid climate conditions. So this affects things like, especially sun blindness, uh, dust. Dust is a big factor in the desert, obviously, given the light nature of the sand in some cases. Um, <clears throat> just driving your vehicles around is going to be creating dust, which is going to obscure your line of sights and uh, hinder your task check. So if you saw my uh, scenario playthrough of the nut that's Cherkoskoya, where we used a step rules in effect, uh, same kind of idea. There was uh, an initial bombardment on one map board which caused like a low level of dust to appear which was enough to throw off some of the stukas that I had from attacking successfully. So dust is definitely a huge factor and uh, sun blindness as well especially one of the first scenarios there blazing chariots where um, it basically has the uh, the British attacking into the sun where the Germans are set up with the sun at their backs, and uh, Damon and I actually played that one. We'll get into that when this narrow gets in, but sun blindness is a thing, obviously, in the desert. A lot of rules on dust. Much like the mist rules in Camp Group Piper, there's uh, many levels of dust available in the desert. Again, not surprisingly. Finally, we get into some alternate terrain types, and this is where, again, we talk about uh, things like step terrain. Looks to be... Uh, yeah, for step terrain, all hamada becomes brush, all scrub becomes woods. And, uh, again, there's a couple of levels of dust available. And primarily you're using desert boards again just to represent it because you don't have obviously the uh, expanse of trees and, and your typical uh, Russian steppe terrain. <clears throat> All right, then we have the Italian vehicle notes, chapter H. <clears throat> Now I've already got my uh, my Rago containers all uh, prepared, labels already made, ready to receive these uh, nice new gray counters that I'll be starting clipping this, uh, well, probably today. <laughs> Just get right into it. Uh, not a lot of heavy, heavy tanks, obviously. Again, the Russian or uh, Italians, excuse me, were not the most uh, prepared for uh, the war, especially facing off against stronger armies like Russians and such. Um let alone some of the British and uh, French in Africa. And then, of course, once the Americans show up, they're completely uh, overwhelmed quite easily. Um, it will be interesting to play some of those scenarios. Again, the troop quality isn't that great, but you get away from the 658s and the A747s, it, uh, it's sometimes good to play with lower caliber troops, get a more of a, a gritty feel of the uh, of the game. And of course, the vehicle rarity factor chart, which, to be honest, I've never ever considered or looked at or used. I assume it's something for design your own and or um, scenario designers in general. But um, <clears throat> I guess it's information that you could use to make sure you're not putting in vehicles into a scenario that weren't, uh, weren't there.
And then we have some chapter A replacement pages. So again, this is all going to be superseded by the uh, pocketbook. So these are just going to go into storage along with uh, some of the other stuff. I wonder if they've released any errata or 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 a modified and in the victory conditions because this page here seems to be extra. Unless it's just to complete it because the uh, the the page numbering maybe. I'm not quite sure. <clears throat> we'll have to look into it. And then we have of course our notes. Uh, so anything obviously in in the uh, the, the reprints of paperwork that come with your modules. If you ever see the black dot, it's something new that's been added. So in this case, it's the Eritreans. And of course, Ethiopians as well. All right, let's look at the overlays. Again, uh, these are pretty standard desert overlays. I'm not gonna spend too much time on them. As if you don't have enough desert, you can get some hillocks and uh, sand dunes and several wadi features or yeah we also have the chapter F divider which has of course your summary tables of everything that applies to desert And again, it has its own terrain chart. All right, let's look at the scenarios. Um, so there's going to be 53 of them. We'll just zip through them quickly. So again, Blazing Chariots, this is something that Dave and I played. You've got uh, 12 of the stewards that are attacking into the sun against Germans, which have the sun at their back. Now, um, again, like I said, we played this one. It was a slaughter for the, uh, the British, uh, or I should say the British were slaughtered as they approached. It just... Once you're facing that sun blindness, um, you you can't see what's shooting at you, and the basically the it's like shooting fish in a barrel for the Germans. So it was a very one-sided scenario playthrough that we did. So we're definitely not going to be playing that one again. Rachi Ridge. Um, number forty-three. Eh? This one might not be too bad. Troop count is fairly low. You get like a dozen squads on each side. The, the British, of course, are attacking with more. Falstermager is coming in. Now, uh, I guess they arrive by airdrop. Yeah, they do. So if you want to do a, a German airborne scenario, then this would be the one to do. So <clears throat> I think we'll uh, we'll consider this one on the short list here, Dave. Kamsin, uh, which I believe is the Arabic name for the uh, the sandstorms that periodically cropped up. Yeah, I have to be honest, I'm not a big, huge fan of desert scenarios. But um, we'll have to give them a go, some of them at any rate. Uh, this Rachi Ridge and Kamsin do seem kind of interesting. Again, variable troop mix, especially for the Brits, because you get AT guns, tanks, you have squads. I wonder what the uh, the win-loss ratio is for the uh, for those two scenarios. Escape from Derner, another huge one. So this is uh, basically three complete boards and two half boards, and uh, yeah, definitely not one that we're going to be playing. We just don't have the table space for it, although it might be nice to consider some kind of campaign. I'd love to print off a huge map in, uh, from Bastel there and uh, just use that because it does have several overlays in it as well. And a lot of individual vehicle counters for the uh, the British, including shovel carrier models. Turn the tables. Wow, look at the overlays on that. Sand dunes everywhere. Um, I'm going to say no to this one. 
but uh, again, it does seem to have a good mix of of stuff. It has light dust in effect. There's late afternoon sun in effect. So you have sun blindness coming in. Fort McGregor, uh, two half boards with one overlay in the center. Early morning, so we got to get a copy in. <clears throat> night rules are in effect. A desert night rules, which is really interesting. And the NVR is only three, so it must have been uh, um, a cloudy day or a or little, little moon. Point of no return. Uh, looks to be a huge one. This is just the British uh, order of battle. Ten turns. Imagine the playtime on this is uh, quite long. New Zealanders, eh? And this is the, uh, the German order of battle for this point of no return. So the squad count isn't really that high. Uh, probably looking at what close to 25 30 squads. Yeah, about 25 for the attacker and uh, around 20 or so for the uh, for the defender. Again, a mix of just about everything. It's got guns, vehicles, fortifications. Um, it's got OBA in it for the uh, New Zealanders. Oh, and the uh, Germans get a field phone as well, so they also have OBA. And there's only three SSRs for the uh, scenario. Looks to be battalion mortars for both sides. All right, so next up is a bridgehead to wet. <clears throat> Overcast with rain falling at scenario start. So there's probably going to be a lot of mud. Taking up Takaruna. This one's actually got Italians in it. So the first ones have all been British versus uh, Germans. This one has actually got some Italians finally, so facing off against, uh, again, New Zealanders. Uh, it's only a half board, so this might uh, might actually be doable. It's only got one overlay. Yeah, I think we'll try this one, Dave. It's a small infantry only one. Um, Italian set up on defense, and although they outnumber the attackers, the attackers are better quality troops. Should be interesting. Let's check the score on that one and see if we're going to play that one. Too little, too late. Um, a lot of SSRs in this one. Four roadblocks and 88 long. Three map boards. Uh, that's all 20, I think, is a canal board, isn't it? Oh, no, that's 23. 23 is a canal board, right? This one takes place in Italy. Again, Italians versus Germans. So uh, a little brother-on-brother -brother action here. So a lot of Italian tanks, which are weak armored, facing off against an 88. So I, I don't think... Oh, an SS to boot, so I just don't think the Italians have much of a chance against the SS, especially with 88, you know, demolishing tanks with their three and their up-armored turrets with a four. Um, just the sound of the shell going over might be enough to kill the tank. Uh, 
high price to pay again maybe Italians versus uh, English two half boards this might be another small one when I when I pick boards that we're gonna or games we're gonna play I tend to pick ones that have like a small uh, board mix just so we can fit it on the camera uh, to record it better the problem with the boards like this is um, we don't really have the setup to do that and in order to zoom in you we basically have to use some kind of tripod uh, to uh, zip around the map board which could be disorientating so we're probably going to be avoiding a lot of the larger ones but uh, you never know when we may throw the odd one in but generally speaking we like to take ones that have small map board size and again small unit counts mix of guns vehicles defensive fortifications ELR2 Italians and there's not that many, many of them well there's plenty of them just low ELR2 so there can be a lot of a lot of ELR replacing going on down bridge to nowhere and then we have retribution Americans versus Italians so six six sevens and six six sixes for 16 versus 20 uh, first line Italian troops. Half a chance. Look at that. It's got six boards. Definitely not playing that one. Um, wow. Simultaneous setup too. So. Nope. Battle for Rome. This one uh, might be uh, doable. Again, Italians versus Germans. Uh, you got Falschmager, 16 of those versus only 11 447s, which are the uh, the elite Italians. <clears throat> I think something like this we can play, Dave. It's got three boards, so it's going to be... <clears throat> Interesting, but I'd like to play this one, I think. Chi er, erendiamo? Apologize for my butchered Italian attempt. Oh, this one's got Ethiopians versus Eritreans. Nice. Really, really early war too, October 35. Quinitis escape. Again, you have Ethiopians versus uh, Italians. 23 237s. Wow. It's like an army of partisans coming against the uh, much better armed Italians. I guess you need the numbers to soak up the losses. ELR of 2 as well. Well, both sides have an ELR of 2, so if the Italians start getting hit, those first lines start to go with conscript really quick. This is a very small game. I think, Dave, we should try this one as well. Board 25 is a desert board, but, um, you're looking at uh, what six squads for the Italians and uh, the Ethiopians are attacking with what 13, 14, 15 squads. Both Italians and Eritreans are fanatic. Circle the wagons. This one's uh, we're not going to do. It's just too big. Does have cavalry, Eritrean, uh, or no? Uh, yeah, Eritrean cavalry. Something Dave and I haven't really done is cavalry. We may have to throw in a cavalry scenario every now and then. Three half boards, uh, size wise looks doable. Again, Italians versus Ethiopians. Squad size is uh, 
I guess a typical for the scenario. Two armored cars and a uh, facing off against a crap load of Ethiopians. July 1936. A lot of overlays, so this is definitely a, a vassal friendly game. Set up your overlays and then what I do is I print those off and uh, just cobble them together and make a map. Camp Nabiwa. Italians versus uh, British. Partisans versus Italians, July 1941, Montenegro. Yeah, this one might be doable too. Play one of those smaller unit ones, uh, lesser quality troops again. Night rules are in effect for nocturnal attrition, hence the name. And we have Italians setting up with New Zealanders on the attack with the one NVR. Wow. Those poor Italians are just going to sit there and die. Another huge one with four map boards. Let's move that coffee out of the way. Savoy. Two pager Russians versus Italians. Four half boards. Two overlays. Italians on the attack in 1942. Coming on as cavalry. Italian cavalry coming on. A uh, line in the sand, so it looks to be a variable um, scenario where you can basically pick your uh, your different attack forces. So there'll be a lot of replayability just because um, the variable uh, choices you can make. So it consists of three consecutive scenarios that can be played individually or as part of a mini campaign. So it's got the three scenarios, Rommel's Remedy, Egypt's Last Hope, and Twisted Knickers. So these three scenarios here, you can make together into a small little uh, miniature campaign. Now if it wasn't for the board size, it would be uh, something I might consider doing with Dave. We definitely have to set up something special with a tripod. Four map bars, but not a lot of vehicles, so I assume there's going to be a lot of maneuvering around to uh, try and get those shots off. Interesting. It's a good little mix. I like to see that uh, they're, they're getting away from the standard scenarios and into something more of like uh, miniature campaigns, variable orders of battle. It's a very interesting uh, uh, time. Russians versus Italians again. Very nice. Must have been a bad day for the Italians when they went into Russia. This is a huge one. 
five and a half turns, but look at the troop quality or count. Just a lot of Italians and vehicles and guns. December 42. Oh, Russians like a winter camouflage too. <laughs> Italian units may conduct bonsai charges as if Japanese. Wow. That's not something you picture the Italians doing. This is an interesting one. Uh, it's Italians and Germans. And um, you can purchase uh, some of these variable groups to uh, augment your force. So again, it's got a huge replay replayability from the Axis side on what can show up. So if it doesn't work the first time around, if you decide to play this again, you can give it a different, uh, different go. And looks like all Russian, German, and elite Italians all have winter camouflage. <clears throat> I think uh, this one looks very doable, Dave. Victory is life, another desert one. Red Dawn. This is along the Don River, I assume. Yeah, I've been in that kind of position myself on winter exercise in the military. <laughs> it's, it always sucks whenever you're in snow up here in Canada. We can kind of get that. A lot of cavalry units coming out from the Russians. Uh, looks to be another huge one, so uh, 285. So this is here. So this is obviously the German. This is the uh, combined Italian or uh, American and the British elements. Casserine Pass, February 43. All right, Recon and Force. American Rangers. American Rangers versus uh, Italians. <clears throat> this should be uh, another bad day for the Italians. I don't see how they're going to do it. Italian units have an ELR of 1. <laughs> and the Axis cannot form multi-location fire groups. So the 12, 3, 4, 6 is all have an ELR of 1. Well, the 17 of them. Wow, bad day. Danger forward. This is to be another night scenario starting at, uh, start, you have dusk rules, I guess, on turn three. And then it turns into night for the last two turns. Again, Italians versus Germans. 11, 5, 4, 8, Falschemager against, uh, we'll be looking at 10, Italian squads. A 
All roads lead to Rome. Um, interesting board layout. Two half boards, two full boards. And some random reinforcement uh, table. I'm not sure how that works exactly. Oh, I see. This is what shows up. So you roll the two dice, colored die and the white die, and cross-reference, and that determines what Italians uh, show up to play. Real randomness to it, so you don't know what's going to show up. Some armed civilians. Maybe a couple of armored cars and tanks. And then lastly, we got the Hunters Become the Hunted. Um... Italians attack and Germans. Two half boards. Uh, I think we can do this one, Dave. Just looking at it, it seems to be uh, interesting. All right, let's look at the counter sheets. So first up, we have the Italians. Uh, These got all the uh, MMCs plus some leaders, armor leaders, and uh, the obligatory concealments. Again, just the legibility and clarity of these counters versus the older uh, ones that you may have gotten in, in uh, the first edition Beyond Valor or even the um, Avalon Hill days. Sheet 2, again, more Italians. These are the half squads with some more leaders, support weapons, and, of course, a lot of minefields that are probably going to be used in the desert. We get to the uh, Italian vehicles. Um, again, a lot of these are not designed for late war action. Just the, the armor value is too low. The guns are just too ineffective. So um, any late war Italian armor that shows up is probably going to be easily defeated. Oh, and these must be the uh, Ethiopians. Now, one thing it doesn't have is Ethiopian counters. Uh, extract strike that. And here we have some more desert counters with uh, Italian guns. A couple of extra British uh, compliments just because. British 3-inch mortar alternatives. I'm not sure what that references. Maybe it's somewhat different than the uh, your typical counter. Set up for um, desert uh, use, maybe? No idea. And here we have the Ethiopians. All right, lastly, let's look at the boards. So uh, <clears throat> includes eight boards, uh, all desert boards, including two versions of board 25. So uh, this one here is the first one. Again, a lot of wadis and hills. Small little hamlets to contest over. It's got just about every kind of terrain and desert all on one board. One thing missing is really sand dunes <laughs> and uh, hillocks and such. <clears throat> this is an alternative version of that same board. Um, 25E, um, zero, one, two, three, four, as uh, quite the escarpment that you have to, uh, attack up. That would be really interesting to, um, to take on five level hills and, uh, leading to the upper ground. Flat Desert, which are basically your next three boards.
four boards, five boards. Yeah, so uh, not a lot to talk about, six boards. So you have five, uh, six desert boards, and you have the board 25 and the board 25 variant. And there we have it. So uh, Hollow Legions, third edition, uh, hot little hands. Um, uh, excited to play some of these scenarios. Um, again, it's going to be a, uh, a vast difference from what Dave and I have played uh, before. Uh, typically, it's a lot of Eastern Front Russians versus Germans, maybe on the Western Front British and Americans versus Germans. So it's throwing some Italians into the mix, even some, you know, fratricide between uh, Italians and Germans. Um, it'll make an interesting change of things. You throw in some cavalry from some Ethiopians and Italians, and uh, all told, it should be uh, should be good times. Um, yeah, again. Living up in Canada, uh, ordering from MFP is redonkulous, aside from the exchange rate. I probably paid, well, with the shipping and the postage, sorry, uh, customs, I just paid 350 Canadian for a module, which is ridiculous. Luckily, I've got a, a good friend that's willing to go in halvesies on this kind of stuff. It makes it cheaper to uh, purchase. I jokingly said yesterday that uh, it would have been probably cheaper to fly to the winter offensive campaign and or a tournament, even with flights and hotel costs. It probably still would have been uh, comparable to uh, purchasing it from uh, and having it shipped to me. And it took a long time to get to me as well. It was sitting in customs in Montreal for about a week before it finally got into my uh, little hands today on the 7th. So, um yeah, uh, interested to get into it, and uh, let me know what you guys think about the Italians in general. Uh, I mean, the, the troops are not the highest quality, and the ELR is going to be on the low side by and large. Obviously, the Italians were really ill prepared for uh, some serious conflicts, but it uh, should be fun nonetheless to have something less than 658s and 747s playing uh, off against each other. So uh, that's it for me in this video. I think it's gone on long enough, and... Uh, uh, let me know what you guys think, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.